Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for sharing in this time. This is the eighth Sunday of Pentecost. Jesus continues to teach with parables about the kingdom of heaven. What does this mean? The kingdom of heaven is like a parking lot service with no rain and no wind. It's another great day. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Council met last week. We will be meeting parking lot services only through Labor Day, September 7th. <sighs> Vacation Bible School is coming up. Registration is still open. It will run August 3rd through the 7th. At home, of course, and online. Supplies will be distributed. More information and supplies. You see Alex. And uh, we will take a look at a new way to do vacation Bible school. So the kingdom of heaven, found in a variety of ways, Jesus uses a variety of examples to help the disciples understand. The kingdom of heaven is like, fill in the blank for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn, God, when human bonds are broken. Let us pray. Beloved, beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom, your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from the first, from 1 Kings chapter 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. So give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this great people? 
it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and he said, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. And then from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give up everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who entered indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then finally, the gospel from the 13th chapter of Matthew. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it had grown, it, was the, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls and finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good in baskets, but threw out the bad. So will it be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of tea. And Jesus said, have you understood this? And they said, yes. Here ends the reading. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you had one wish, what would it be? One wish. I wish that all my wishes would come true. Solomon had the chance to have one wish granted, and he asked for wisdom and understanding, the ability to know right from wrong, good from evil. He was not asking for himself, but for his people that he was now king of Israel. God, give me the ability to rule them fairly, justly, knowing what's right and what's wrong. Think about Genesis 3 and the temptation of Adam, Adam and Eve in the garden. They looked at the tree and they listened to temptation and they saw that the, tree, the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She ate it. She also gave some to the man who was with her, and he ate it. And then the eyes of both were opened. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. The difference between the two stories, Solomon asked for that understanding, that knowledge for his people. Adam and Eve were seeking it just for themselves. And I wonder if in all this long reading through Matthew 13 in the parables, the kingdom of heaven is like. I wonder if the reoccurring theme 
is the kingdom of heaven is intended to serve you, intended to serve others. I was reminded of a story this week about a seminary professor who way back when got up at the daily chapel service to deliver the sermon. He started by quoting Luke chapter 12. Have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Amen. And he sat down. That was the message. That was the whole message. Now, a seminary professor can get away with that, but a pastor cannot. But in a seminary, perhaps he wanted the students to think, what does that mean? That God's good pleasure is to give you the kingdom. A gift, grace-filled, mercy, love. Have no fear, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. And perhaps that sermon at the seminary invited the students to say, what does this mean? And what does it mean when we have the kingdom? We don't understand. That's in contrast to the end of the gospel here today when Jesus puts together this string of parables. The kingdom of heaven is like five of them. And at the end, he asked his disciples, have you understood all this? And they answered, yes. Reading through scripture, we learn about these disciples and we doubt that they understood the parables. They, we doubt they understood the mission of Jesus right from the beginning. So what do these parables want to tell us? A couple weeks ago, we talked about that sower throwing seed everywhere. Some of it landed where it did not survive. Some of it grew and yielded. And then last week, it was the farmer who sowed good seed in the field, but an enemy sowed the evil the uh, weed, and they grew together until the harvest. And so today, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. And the mustard seed in the Middle East is not like the mustard seed we see around here. It does grow and grow and grow into great big shrubs, almost tree-like shrubs that birds can indeed nest in it. Does the kingdom of heaven have to do with small beginnings? and great potential? Or the kingdom of heaven is like yeast mixed with flour. Just a little bit of yeast can make all the difference. Scripture says this is three measures of flour. A woman mixed some yeast with three measures of flour so she could make bread. My Bible says that three measures of flour is 30 pounds. That's a lot of bread. And just a little bit of yeast can feed a lot of people. Are we the yeast that changes the world around us so that people might be fed with the word? Or the kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure where a man discovers it and then sells everything he has. So he buys that field and he now owns that treasure which is no longer hidden. Or a merchant who is in search of great pearls. He sells everything he has to possess the one great pearl. And then what? How does he eat? How does he find shelter? How does he live when the only thing he has is a pearl of great value? or a treasure we're selling everything for. Have you understood all this? And the disciples said, yes. Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Hymn number 70, 764. The Father will keep you in his love forever. 
The Father stoops down to heal you, uplift you, and restore you. The Father stays close beside you in all things, works with you, thankful hearts raised to God. Maybe there's not just one message here, but many. The kingdom of heaven is like the tiny mustard seed that can grow into a tree-like shrub. Birds can nest in its branches. The word can grow for others. The birds benefit from the mustard seed, and our neighbors benefit from the word of God sown in us. Yeast joined with the flower creates growth, a spirituality. Yeast changes us. The word changes us. And others perhaps might benefit as well. A hidden treasure that's purchased, there's no growth or change there until that treasure is shared, spent, invested. The same with the pearl of great price. Nothing changes. Nobody benefits unless it's used for the benefit of others. And then the last parable of the kingdom of heaven, kind of a warning. At the end, there will be a dividing. The good and the bad, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The righteous will shine like the sun. What does this mean? Have no fear. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do you understand this? Seems to me that these parables are intended to reassure us that, indeed, as Paul says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am convinced that the Father's good pleasure is to give me and to give you the kingdom to sow the word, the seed of God that grows, the yeast that changes. But perhaps most of all, the merchant in search of something of great value is God, and the precious pearl or treasure is you. And God gives everything. Jesus Christ, for the world that God loves, so that God might possess you. God might change you. God might claim, claim you. And then the kingdom of heaven is about us, treasured, treasured by God, seeking to understand what does this mean for me? What does this mean for the neighbor? So have no fear. The Father has chosen to give you the kingdom, and the kingdom is ours forever. Thanks be to God, and amen. So the hymn of the day is a celebration of being chosen by God. Let us go now to the banquet.
God invites all the poor and hungry to the banquet of justice and good where the harvest will not be hoarded so that no one, no one will lack for food. We confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having been called and blessed with the kingdom, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in ordinary things. A mustard seed, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways we encounter the Lord and you encounter us in daily living. As the birds of the air nest in the branches of tree, gather the nations of the world into a welcoming shade, the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to those who are dying, refuge to the weary, justice for those who are oppressed, healing to the sick, comfort to those who grieve. You show mercy and steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this gathering of your people ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this time and place. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of the people around us in all times and in all places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love. We offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, sent forth by God's blessing.
park down here on the end is Dolores Posh, and if you get a chance, either honk at her or wave at her, because it's her birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dolores. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because God has chosen to give us the kingdom, we can go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to God for all of you this day. Thank you.